so here, here we are today with Amadea. I know Amadea. I'll be honest. I met her because she's my pelvic floor therapist. I, <laughs> I will just tell everybody, everybody that uh, we met a couple of, a few years ago now when I was having issues with my pelvic floor and you think it's only an afterbirth thing, but I had it three years after giving birth to my third child. I didn't have any issues before, uh, but I started having them when I started a, a higher impact workout that I hadn't been doing for a long time and then realized I was peeing my pants when I was doing it. So this happens. I think we just, you know, I'm gonna tell you bluntly, that's what it was. <laughs> and I couldn't finish my workout, so it was very frustrating. So yes, I, I can Amadea. imagine. I saw Amadea and uh, I, I'll be honest, we send lots of our clients just before on one of the threads, Judy was saying how Amadea has helped her tremendously. I know our client Elodie has seen her and has a, has a great, uh, great uh, results. So today, I think Amadea, we're talking about prepping the pelvic floor for birth. So during pregnancy and for birth and how we heal afterwards and a whole bunch of stuff in between, I'm sure. And I'm really looking forward to this conversation because if you do Thank not know, you this, for is having my, me. this is my favorite, favorite topic, the perineum and the pelvic floor. I'll, I'll, I can go on and on. Uh, so I know we only have 30 <laughs> minutes, but <laughs> well, so, I'm, I'm thrilled to be here. Thrilled. I'm so happy. How long have you been doing this, Amadea? Uh, just about 10 years now, actually. 10. Yeah. 10. I, wow. 10 years. I know. That's I can't amazing. believe it either sometimes. Yeah. I know. So yeah. I have to say, before we even start, I'm thrilled that you're being so candid about your own experience because I find that a Thank lot of you. women, they don't admit it. So I think it's really important that you're, you're being an advocate and being really vulnerable about what you've experienced in the past. I, mean, I, I will say, after I did have my third baby, I was at a wedding and all of my friends had just had babies at that time. And we were dancing, I think, to that song, jump, jump, you know, jump, jump. And I, was, I had this panic look on my face. My friend did. And I'm like, are you peeing yourself? And she's like, yeah. And I think we all, afterwards we talked about it. We all were. <laughs> and I was like, oh, my gosh, we do need to talk about it. Because people are sitting in silence, not exercising. Absolutely. Not, you know, mm -hmm. not going out, maybe wearing thick pads, you know, that are super uncomfortable. Because they th and they think this is normal. Like that is yeah, so that's a messaging. huge issue. Yeah, no, that's yeah. a huge issue. A lot of women are suffering in silence and it's just because they have either been misguided, you know, with good intention by maybe a family member or a healthcare provider and they've been told that it's normal, it's, it's a plight of postpartum or pregnancy or yeah. they don't know where to find the resources. And the issue is nobody's saying anything because none of their friends are saying anything. So there's no right. reason to. So the more women we can get talking about it and just admitting what is happening because it's so common, I think we're going right. to get a lot more women in to help faster. So kudos to yeah, you. Yeah, I know my whole team. <laughs> my whole team, we talk about it. I've got Mika online. Hi, Mika. And Ida is here. I know Heather will join on later. And we talk about it nonstop. And I know other doulas do too. Good. It's uh, part, of our, part of our role. So let's, let's jump in about... Um, yeah. I'll be honest. I did not... Uh, prepare during my pregnancy because uh, I only thought mm. it was a thing to do afterwards so what what do you say to, to uh, and I recommend that some of my, my some of my clients will go before but what are what is your recommendation in terms of pregnancy and preparing for birth yeah well we see women we see women after 12 weeks of pregnancy so if nothing um, is particularly wrong if there are no particular issues I usually say that we'll we'll follow up maybe four times during the pregnancy. And okay. it's just a good idea because your body is changing so rapidly. Yeah. We want to make sure that your core is able to keep up, right? So if we can strategize during the pregnancy, then we're gonna set you up for success and control in postpartum. And so that's a big piece as well. So uh, I would highly recommend that any woman or a friend of yours that you know is pregnant, um, send them to pelvic health physio as early as possible. Definitely. Right. Uh, I would imagine mm -hmm. if they're already having issues, of course, to go. But even if you're not having issues, uh -huh. this is all in preparation for a healthier postpartum, is what I'm hearing you say. Absolutely. 
Right. Yeah, so we can control issues during, and then, of course, we're reducing risk for issues postpartum. Absolutely. Yeah, and, and some of our clients have been saying that, you know, as the belly is growing, and that they, they will start to have some incontinence. So it already is, it's already starting in pregnancy. Oh, definitely. Again, the weight of pregnancy is enough to put enough strain on the pelvic floor muscles that they can't necessarily keep up. And then how we're using our body um, during that period can also put extra strain on the pelvic floor. And it may be how you've always used your body, but it might not be able to compensate for mm -hmm. the, the changes that are occurring in that short period. And what do you mean by how you use your body? I'm having well, all these thoughts how right you, now. How you're <laughs> exercising. Right. Um, even some things as simple as coughing or sneezing you might need to start to actively engage the pelvic floor muscles during those uh, uh, moments of stress, right? Because sometimes those reflexes can be inhibited. We call the reflex uh, actually the knack when you contract your pelvic floor before effort. So things like lifting, um, the impact mm. exercises that you're doing, that Zumba class you're attending, right? Um, how you are getting in and out of a car, getting in and out of bed. I mean, there's a million things that wow. we can talk about and it's individual, right? So it's right. based on when that woman is having their symptoms and then strategizing how can we keep them doing what they need to be doing to function in life and stay healthy, but still reduce pressure and strain on the pelvic floor and on the rest of the core. Right. And yeah. um, yes, yeah, so I, would, I wouldn't have even thought getting out of bed, you know, and getting out of a car. Yeah, those are just such daily activities that we do Absolutely. without thinking. So it's bringing that mindfulness into, oh, yeah. uh, into what it, whatever you're doing. It's and about have, awareness. Yeah. And is what you do, I would say, if someone is complaining of a sore back, could that also be related to the pelvic floor? Like, does that, like... Sure. I'm just thinking both of them are, are seem to be related, you know? Oh, absolutely. So when we're talking about the pelvic floor, you have to remember that that is part of your core. So your core, when we talk about core all the time, we always talk about the abdominals, but that's just a piece. So your core is actually made up of your respiratory diaphragm, so your breathing muscles, mm -hmm. your pelvic floor group at the bottom, the abdominals in the front, and then you have a back muscle called your multifidus. And those four muscle groups are meant to stabilize your spine and pelvis and also support pressure. Okay. So as your body's changing and these muscles are stretching out, right? Some of their reflexes may be inhibited and they might not be supporting at the right time when you're doing the activities that you're used to doing anyway. But in this moment, with that inhibition, with that change, sure, the back can start to ache. You're moving differently as your body is getting heavier and larger too. So you're using muscles in a different way. So yes. it's super important to be able to sort of identify those areas where we can intervene yeah, and I think uh, a lot of people will just think to see you if they're if they are peeing themselves. But what I'm hearing it, it's not just that. It's it's uh, you are really a complement to say the osteopath and the Cairo, perhaps you know, all working, all working oh. together. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's not and an either or. No, 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 no. We work with other professionals for sure. And we um, advocate for a complementary and multidisciplinary approach. So yeah. you need a team sometimes, but it, it is much more than just urinary incontinence. So we're treating yeah. pelvic organ prolapse, so like bladder descent. Um, we're treating pelvic girdle pain. A lot of women have that pain in sort of the sacral area or the pubic bone. We're treating um, the separation of the abdominals, which begins in pregnancy. Any sort yes. of fecal issue or anal yeah. issue, we're going to be treating that as well. Of course. So, you know, it's, it's a lot bigger than just the urinary incontinence for sure. But that's probably what we're best known for. Yes. Right? Yes. Yeah. But again, the more we talk about it, the more we see that, wow, there's a lot more things that you do treat um, without saying things are always normal. Oh, it's normal. I just, you know, I'm pregnant. It's normal. It's normal. And, and unfortunately, I've had clients with doctors who just say, oh, you just have to have the baby and, and all of that will go away. And I'm like, no, go and see, <laughs> go and see someone no. before. You don't want to live your pregnancy in total pain and perhaps, you know, slight movements and slight exercises can, uh, can, can help. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. It's common, but these, these issues are not 
normal and they can be addressed. And some of these things, if they're not addressed in pregnancy, well, then they're going to linger or they're going to reoccur right. in postpartum. So right. why not set you up, prepare you for that period of life too? You're already going to have enough on your plate, right? You have a new baby exactly. and life. So why not have this already under control? That's what I say. One of the questions, and I wanted to have this discussion with you because yeah. in the doula world, the, um, it, it can be a, a yes or no. Some people are for it and some people are not. And what is your take and I had asked you, oh, what's your take on perineal massage? So massaging the perineum in preparation for birth. And your yeah. first reaction was, what do you mean massage? Stretching, yes. Massage, probably a no. Maybe you didn't say that, but I was assuming that's what you meant. So I'd like to have your take because in the doula side of things, some right. doulas are for it. Uh, and some doulas are against it. You know, they say the body knows what to do. You don't need to be going around there. The more that you stretch and burn, the more scar tissue is being created. Mm -hmm. um, but I have had clients who've had much success with it, even yeah. with, you must know that tool called Epino yeah. uh, that stretches yes, the yes. perineum in preparation. I've had wonderful you know, clients with wonderful results, partly they say because of that. So what's your take? I'm really excited about hearing your take on this. <laughs> I support perineal stretching in pregnancy. Okay. I say, why not put all of your arrows in the right direction? Um, it's about creating elasticity. It's about creating awareness. So it's not just about stretching, right? We also want to know, can that woman relax those muscles, uh, right? Okay. Um, so it's, it's a two-parter. So we want to be able to relax properly. We want to be able to stretch to create um, that elasticity and that compliance. And then also, I guess it's a three-parter, there's a whole nervous system component as well. We're getting used to feeling stretch. We're, we're getting yeah. used to being able to relax and calm our body and our mind at the moment of stretch, which is going to be so important during the delivery as well, right? right? And I would say that the scar tissue that's maybe created um, would be negligible. I mean, okay. you could say the same thing about strengthening a muscle right when you're yes. strengthening a muscle and it's what we call hypertrophying like it's getting larger there are micro tears that are occurring right yeah. and that's sort of part of that discomfort that you have one or two days later um and we're not concerned about that so i would say that if there's any scar tissue being formed it's negligible and the other thing is you don't want to be stretching necessarily to the point of intense pain either right right, right yeah it's a gradual thing. So that would be my argument for that. And in terms of the body being able to do um, what it's meant to do, and that's been an argument in postpartum for not intervening as well, right? Right. So it, then that, I yeah, think, has been the problem you. historically. Your women's bodies are meant to bounce back. They know what to do. But you can't <laughs> necessarily rule out the benefit of a little bit Getting of help. help. Yeah, right? No, I, of intervention. Yeah. And how would you uh, go about teaching someone? Do, 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 do your patients come in and, and see you about the, teaching them how to do the stretching? Oh, like absolutely. With their partner? Like yes. you, have a, you have a guide. Does the partner actually, I'm just like logistic wise, yeah. does the, is the partner there watching what you're doing? Or oh, the is partner is doing. doing. So I, yes. You're, the partner's there stretching, mm -hmm. and you're guiding. Okay, okay. Yeah, so we often have partner sessions about 35 weeks, at 35 weeks, 35, 36 weeks um, pregnancy. And we'll invite the partner in, and I run the partner through the exercises. So there are okay. three main stretches that I show in clinic. Um, and so then I'll demonstrate and then have the partner do it and it's a nice moment too to see sort of the communication between the the couple yes. and how they're going to sort of progress that at home um and often honestly the, the partners can be a little bit fearful because they don't want to create pain either they're also in this pregnancy experience they might be nervous about you know the next step yes. and, yeah, and course. things too so i think it's nice for them to come in and have a professional kind of guide them through it answer their questions too um, it's, I, I really enjoy our, our partner sessions here. I would think you have to um, go into these with lots of humor. 
I would, I would Yo, think humor for me. I know I would anyway. Yes. <laughs> I think I'd be, my partner's watching right now and I'm, I'm sure, you know, he, we would just be laughing. We'd be in stitches. <laughs> Yeah, I no. Know it's a bonding moment, right? It's a bonding Absolutely. moment. Absolutely. It's 100% a hundred percent a bonding moment. And I think the more we can kind of disarm people in clinic, make them comfortable, right? Just make it relax yeah. and normalize it all. Because I mean, let's be honest, it's I can recognize that the field, what I do sometimes can be odd to people, you know, we're yeah. stretching vaginas and the pelvic floor <laughs> and you know, we have multiple people in the room. So it's, it's to try to normalize it and have some fun with it. Yeah, I always thought OBGYNs, you know, people think, oh, OBGYNs, my gosh, they deal with vaginas. But I said, no, you've never had, if you've never had a session with a pelvic floor, like OBGYNs are in there for five seconds. Your, your pelvic floor specialist is spending some time, some quality yeah. time there. <laughs> no one thinks about that. That's the truth. <laughs> Ida has brought the topic up about afterbirth. Um, yeah. And uh, healing after birth. I usually tell people, and you correct me if I'm wrong, that once we have our babies, uh, go through that postpartum, that six-week postpartum period, and then, uh, you know, take your appointment ahead of time, but then see you around that six-week mark. Now, I don't know if that's true or not. When do you suggest people yeah, come and see you? About six weeks. I mean, normal tissue healing, like that timeline, is about four to six weeks, six to eight weeks, so somewhere in there. So um, if there's been any sort of perineal trauma and suturing, we don't really want to be moving that tissue until mm -hmm. it's healed. We want it to heal cleanly. Right. Um, but yeah, about six weeks is a good uh, marker, five, six weeks. And now I find, we used to yeah. say like after your first appointment with your, your, um, your OB, right? Your postpartum yeah. follow-up. But now those follow-ups are happening a bit later. Like sometimes I have women coming in, yes. it's eight weeks now, 10 weeks, 12 weeks. So I would say still come in and see your physio um, about six weeks postpartum. Yeah. Which is too late. I am going to be telling you 12 weeks to see your doctor postpartum is, <laughs> is too late. So please, please, please tell them that you need to see them ahead of time. I mean, some doc, you know, some caregivers are, are better than others. Um, others, I've had one recently, she said they didn't even have a vaginal exam during yeah. her, 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 her follow-up. And that's wrong. They should be looking... What's the state of your cervix? What's the state of, you know, and asking you questions. I mean, unfortunately, uh, not everyone uh, does this, but they should be. Hence, having someone like Amadea and her team on your team, definitely, you know, for sure. Yes, yes. Yeah, ahead so what, of time and after. And, and after. So what do you see, what are the most common issues that you see after birth that you help Postpartum? with? Postpartum? Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, the urinary incontinence, For sometimes sure. fecal incontinence as well, right? Anal incontinence. So that could be gas as well um, as um, well, fecal matter. So it's um, just people, just to, just to confirm, that is you not being able to hold in your Yes, poop. sorry. Urine, so your urine pee, leakage, yeah. yeah, urine leakage or urine urgency, you feel like you have to run to the toilet or you're having right, trouble you holding in gas. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Um, we'll see women coming in... Um, reporting heaviness in the vagina, heaviness in the rectum. Ah, okay. And so that could be indicative of a pelvic organ prolapse. So the bladder could be sitting low in the pelvis or due to pressure of the pregnancy, maybe how they've been toileting the delivery, they could have developed a bit of a pouch in the rectum. And we call that a rectocele. And so sometimes they can feel heavy if stool is getting trapped there or they might feel constipated and have difficulty evacuating. So constipation is something that we're treating oh, as well. Oh, I had well. that so much. Oh, yeah. Oh, gosh, for weeks on end, I think I was really bad. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> not so we're going to talk. Not pleasant. Oh, no, it's not pleasant. And if you're straining to pass a bowel movement, well, you're, that's extra stress on the pelvic floor and on the perineum too, right? right. So it's something that we want to address and give some toileting um, strategies for. We see a lot of uh, people for pain, scar pain. So it could be perineal scar pain, but it could also be C-section pain, right? Yes, we don't. C-section yes, scar, course. we don't think about that. No, not But at that all. can also have an effect on the vagina because that tissue, that fascia that's coming from the abdomen, if that's being pulled tight or, or starting to stick together, adhering, that pulls up from the vaginal canal. Okay. And so we also have women reporting pain yeah. with intercourse, even though they had a C-section. And we yes. can help with that, absolutely. So pain with sex, either from C-section or vaginal delivery, that's definitely within our, our toolbox. 
Um, and then, of course, we have the abdominal separation, so what we call diastasis. Yes. When you're sick, quite frequent. Yes. Yeah. So we would say 90 to 100% of women in their third trimester have this split. But then in postpartum, a certain percentage will, main, will keep it, will maintain that. And so sometimes we need to work on the core. We need to look at posture. We need to look at how, again, they're doing things to try to get that closure and try to get the support for the pressure that they're creating during those activities. So those well, are the big ones. Yeah, and I find the, the, the diastasis recti, I mean, some women are starting their really intense exercise workouts uh, without knowing what to do and what not to do or without having checked if they have that right. already, which is, you know, if you're doing crunches, that is just opening it up still, which is what I've been told. So there's very specific exercises that we should be staying away from and that we can be doing. Um, well, wh what I would say is it's very individual. Okay. So it's, it's, this is why the assessment is so important. We want to know, A, can you find your core muscles? So the abdominals, the pelvic floor, how are they coming in? What is the timing like? Are they kicking in? So they're meant to contract about a quarter of a second before effort. So I'm picking up my coffee cup. My pelvic floor is already on. I'm picking up my weights. They're already on. But sometimes that can be inhibited. So you want to make sure your timing coordination is sound, right? And then if that is sound, maybe your pelvic floor is working great. Your abdominals are kicking at the right time. Then we can push the exercises a little bit, right? So it's very individual. So we want to tailor whatever program we're doing, diastasis or not, to the patient and what their goals are, really. Right. Right? Yeah. And I had put in a, a lot of the ads. I was like, it's not just Kegels. Because I think we often no. think, hey, are you doing your Kegels? And people ask me, how many Kegels should I do? And <laughs> I remember in my postpartum with my three kids really sitting there breastfeeding. I'm like, well, I'm breastfeeding so much. I'm just going to do Kegels the whole time while I'm breastfeeding. So, you know, and I'm doing different ones, the elevator one. And yeah. if you don't know what Kegels are, they are when you lift your pelvic floor and then descend it and... Uh, you know, to strengthen it. But it's not just that. Is it? Oh, no, not at all. It's more than Kegels. I say that all the yeah. time. Now, yeah. the pelvic floor contraction is important. And a lot of people are not doing it well. So that that's integral. Actually, we know that of women that are simply told to do pelvic floor exercises or quote Kegels, it's only about 40% that are doing them correctly. So the rest mm. are doing them incorrectly. Uh, and it's about 20% of them that are actually bearing down like pushing, pushing. as opposed to oh, pulling. God. So it ah. is really important to know if you can engage those muscles properly. But outside of the pelvic floor, yeah, we want to make sure that the abdominals are working. We want to see how are you breathing? Are you breathing effectively? Uh, what is your posture like? So we know that posture changes ah. can place more or less pressure on the pelvic floor are related to pelvic organ prolapse. So we really want to make sure, like I said, how, are, how is the system functioning so that no part of the core is being overstressed, right? Yeah, and I know when we worked together, yeah. you were talking about pistons, and it, it, it yeah. was quite, it, it takes a while to kick in. I, I found like it wasn't a, a natural, you think it's a natural thing, my body would know how to do this, and, but then I was like, you know, you're, when you're being mindful of it to do it correctly, uh, what, yeah. and then it, be, then it becomes a habit afterwards, and you don't think about it as much anymore. Absolutely. So the idea is once we've trained it in your nervous system and we've developed that learning pattern, that it kind of kicks in automatically. But we have to sort of voluntary, voluntarily automate it at the beginning. Um, but your system will learn for sure. So it's just about finding the muscles first. That's the hardest part, right? Because yeah. these are muscles that we never think about. <laughs> it's They're true. meant to be working on their own. And then we go looking for them once they've sort of gone off the rails. So, right. Yeah. So, yeah. so then it becomes a little bit more difficult sometimes to even find them. But once we get them, then we can integrate it into, into this sort of automated system and they work for you on, on their own. Mm. Yeah. One thing I know, I remember you telling me too, is that Sylvia, the older you get and the more kids you have, the more you have to, you know, we all, and I think you said all women of all ages, but yeah. You know, there's a whole bunch of my gang, you know, in the 40s. And as it, it's not over, just, you know, when you think it's over. <laughs> no, <laughs> it's, it's not over. It's so, always. It's like, <laughs> no, it's not over. And we treat women right through the age groups, right? Like I have some patients well in their 80s. I have young wow. patients in their 20s, right? Yeah. So 
And, and what we see, what the research shows is that this work is effective at any age. So mm -hmm. it is not over. There's always hope for all of those sort of issues that we discuss. There's hope for it at any stage. We just need to intervene in a way that's appropriate for that patient, what they're doing, right. what their goals are. Um, and in postpartum, what I'm always telling women or even in the antenatal period, it's you're not just treating something now. We are protecting you. We're preventing things later on because the next right. stage in life where I'm seeing women is menopause. Yes. And these yeah. things weren't addressed you know, when the tissue was maybe a little bit more compliant and when they were able to, you know, maybe move a little bit better and sort of these things. So we're setting you up with good skills and, and body control that will carry you through life. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Ida asks here, if the scar tissue's been there for years, therefore it's less elastic, can you still help? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, yeah. absolutely. We work on old scars all the time. Um, so there's always a benefit to it uh, to create mobility around that scar tissue. So we're not removing scar. What we're trying to do is make it as mobile and compliant as possible. Mm. So what we see as a result of that, often within a session, you can see that the muscles recruit better because they're not being bound down by that scar tissue. We can control pain that way because the nerves mm. that are in that area, they want to glide, they want to move, they don't like to be stuck in that right. stiff tissue. So we can control pain that way, we're improving circulation, the tissue needs to breathe and to have blood flow, um, and it's effective at any time, so yes. Yes, so important. So important. So, important. so, so we, we, ha we, we, not, we don't stop this work ever. <laughs> Like so many other things. <laughs> but I will be honest again is that, you know, once you start feeling better and then you don't, you stop peeing yourself a little bit, you end up stopping doing the exercises. Yeah. And I'm like, oh no, they're starting again. So then I, you know, it's like, I feel it's like this roller coaster. I, I'm not going to feel guilty about it. I just said, okay, just start again. It's never, it's never too late to start again. No. Uh, and just do no. like, like any workout, right? You end up going to the That's gym it. for a little while and then you drop off, but then next year you go again. So it's, uh... I think, I think the key to that is finding all well, what we try to do with our patients is to find the minimum required to maintain the improvement. Right. Right. Yeah. Um, and the more you could integrate those exercises into daily activity or your training routine, like if you are doing the piston, which is essentially an exhalation, you're blowing with the contraction to help coordinate your core. If you're doing that through your workouts or every time you're lifting baby or your groceries or whatever, that adds up through a day. That right. adds up. So it might yeah. not be that you need to sit and do a set of a certain number of exercises. I want it to be functional and integrated so you don't have to think about it so much. Yeah, it just becomes natural. natural. Yeah, absolutely. Well, what a great, uh, great chat, Amadea. I, uh, I'm so happy that uh, you could come on. There's like, it's, it's such an interesting, I, I find I'm fascinated by it. And I, I, I think it's a, I'm glad we're talking about it more. Uh, you have a team, I understand. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we're, we're now a team of five physios here. At five. Ask. Okay. Yeah. That's really exciting. That's wonderful. Um, so we're, we're growing and, uh, they're just a lovely group of women that are just really passionate about women's health and pelvic floor health and getting women back to function. We also treat men, FYI, ladies, for your fathers, That's right. brothers, we and, did not and husbands. Talk about them, but they yes, do we have do. issues with their pelvic floors as well. Absolutely. Yes. So I'm just going to yes. put that out there. Yes. Um, but we are a growing, growing team, and we're hoping to continue to expand. So come and see us. Come yeah, and see us definitely. Anytime. Call, Give like us a call. Mon Montrealers and Greater Montreal, uh, Amadeus. I was saying in the same uh, place where we give our prenatal classes and our mommy groups are there, our open house. We have an open house next week if you want to know more about yes. all the different services, which are really fun. It's in Westmount on St. Catherine Street. We're going to all, uh, well, we've tagged Amadea there. If your Facebook page is there, go and like her Facebook page. Uh, follow her. Get prepped. For your birth so you have a better postpartum we want your motherhood journeys to be easy easier they won't be easy yes, but easier, easier. If and you're supported <laughs> and supported yes yes and, uh, i know we talk about the team but 
your doulas, your pelvic floor therapists, your acupuncture, your osteo, your caregivers. I know it, it's a lot, but uh, it makes a difference. It really does. Thank you so much, Amadea. Thank I you. I will see you at the office. Yes, you will. <laughs> Have a great Bye, weekend. everybody. Thank you for watching. Bye, everyone. Take care.